Cora TV. The world is thinking. What I tried to do with the book, instead of just having a plain old adventure story where they go up and bad things happen and how do we get them down, I also tried to talk about, you know, life in space and, and how you adjust to living in space. And um, everything we take for granted, everything that we've, you know, something like gravity, which we've dealt with since we were born and is completely part of our subconscious, these guys are suddenly adjusting to a weightless life. Something as simple as laundry. You know, there's two great mysteries. Uh, in the universe. What's at the bottom of a black hole and how do you have enough clean underwear to last a 14-week mission at the space station? Laundry is a very tough thing to do. Uh, cutting your hair. Uh, you know, they have the Floby that you've seen on, you know, TV with the hose and the vacuum. That's what they use to cut their hair. Uh, people always ask, how do they go to the bathroom? And, and uh, actually, Don told me a funny story, uh, not to get too profane, but um, <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm going to go to NASA had, originally for guys, if you had to urinate, they had a condom with a hose on the end. And they would ask their astronauts, what size condom do you need? And of course, all their astronauts would say, I need a giant condom. And the problem with that is, of course, all these astronauts ended up peeing all over themselves. And so NASA then said, you know, they, they, did, they redid their sizing. And so what was once a small condom became a huge condom. What was a medium condom was the ginormous condom, you know, gargantuan, titan, heroic, all the way up to the Zeus. Um, and everyone still picked the Zeus. And everyone still peed all over themselves. So finally NASA came up with this hose with some suction, and you kind of ease your way toward the hose, and you turn on the vacuum, and you urinate into the hose. But of course, every rookie astronaut, and Don Pettit was no exception, uh, you know, sort of gets a little absent-minded, becomes too intimate with the hose, and it's a mistake apparently you only make once. Not a comfortable experience. But these are the things that sort of made up their life. This, the space station is, is sort of our stepping stone to get to the moon, or our stepping stone to get to Mars. And while they're doing scientific experiments, they're doing things like materials testing and so on, their main job is to figure out how to live comfortably in space, how to make space habitable, how so that you know, the guys who one day colonize the moon or one day colonize Mars know how to do things like cut their hair. Uh, and, and as their mission, uh, you know, went along, these three guys were very, got very comfortable. They were happy up there. You know, every time they looked out the window, the sunrise, the sunsets, you know, 14 sunrises and sunsets uh, every day because of the way they're orbiting the Earth. Um, you know, they're looking at starlight that isn't white, starlight that's red or yellow or green because it isn't filtered by the atmosphere. Uh, there's a peace and tranquility. Their days are unfolding the way they want them to. Uh, there's no... Uh, battling traffic, they're not being nagged to cut the grass, there's no rain bothering them. They sort of were very comfortable in their lives until February 1st when they were shaken out of this sort of very blissful existence in a lot of ways.